here we are again in some familiar territory. We've got two more 6170Rs that are throwing codes. So these uh, 7330s and the 7320s and that vintage were pretty good tractors in comparison to these 6170Rs. It just it's like any newer equipment. I can't really fault John Deere about it. It's like any of the newer stuff. It just seems like there's always doesn't matter whether it's yellow or blue or green. There's all this newer stuff, there's always something throwing a code for some reason on it. It just never ends. It just seems like to me a little bit of the electronic stuff has gotten a little bit kind of carried away on stuff that we're, it just, it's just, you know, we need to simplify things a little better. Uh, you get in, oh, for instance, right here, we got like a 7120 Case International. There ain't nothing beeping at you there. It just runs, and it just keeps running. <laughs> okay, let's see what. Let's see what's going on with this one here. I guess both of these, both of them had drip tape machines on them. Let's see what's going on with them. All right, mute that. We don't need to hear that. How do you turn it off? Okay, hold it. These guys, I don't understand it. We were there's one of those strawberry deers. It's just sitting there. There's nobody in the tractor. It's got a stationary, you know, engine on it. There's nobody around anywhere, and they just left it running with no one around. All the all the chains running on it i just i don't understand it you know what if something like that you got something like that and it, there's no murphy switch on it so there's nothing to protect the engine if a radiator hose pops or you lose oil pressure it's done i just don't understand some of this stuff what these guys are doing but okay so this tractor here i guess we could start it boy it barely started I guess with my equipment, I do, you know, I I don't like leaving my stuff running, nobody around. If I'm going to leave, and I'll just leave her idling. No, I don't want to do that. It makes me a little nervous something might happen when I'm not around. No, it didn't throw any codes when it was running, so let's go into the information system. told them one of these tractors I'm gonna have to do the engine probably pretty soon again on one of these you know I did that one tractor but one of them I did a forced region on the other day and it just rattled and clattered to something terrible you could tell it had valve train problems so it's probably about ready to do the same thing it's probably about ready to drop a valve I told them about it and they said oh okay like it was no big deal a new device has been detected what are you talking about there's nothing plugged into the data link Okay, that's a little weird. That's kind of strange, huh? Alright, let's go up here to the addresses. And it says here... System data error system with restricted function restart engine to attempt a vehicle recovery. That's not good. Might want to fix that. Might need some brakes. Um, 
JDL. What's the JDL controller? What does that do? John Deere Data Link, I'm guessing? I don't know. I don't even give you a definition for the code. I'll have to get service advisor out and find out what that's all about. I don't know. Let me hit the brakes. I was thinking maybe it'd throw a code if I hit the brakes, but... Park lot controller, okay. It's happened 116 times. Remember that one code with the braking system? Happened 116 times as well, so... Okay, park lock system, feedbacks, pressure sensor, circuit fault. System with restricted function, restart engine to attempt vehicle recovery. So... Feedback, pressure sensor, circuit fault, okay. down to the PTA which would be our IVT transmission it's probably going to be something to do with the park lock too maybe I don't know we'll see data error system system with restricted function restart engine to attempt a vehicle recovery count four there's something going on because it started hard it's almost like are we having alternator problems or something it just barely started. So, oh shit. Let's go down to the RPT. Let's see what the hell RPT is. Data error system. I think we've got a CAN bus problem. That's what's going on. We more than likely have a CAN bus problem. It's happened 116 times. You guys are getting where I'm going with this, don't you? Alright. So everything with the CCU controller on this code has happened 116 times. The JDL, I'm not sure what that's about. I'll have to look that up. PLC and the park lock controller code has happened 116 times. How about the PTA controller? I think that's a four time one. Yeah. Different different problems. RPT is 116 times. We're probably gonna have to look at the ones that have the most common problem and go from there. I'm gonna go look at this other tractor and see what's going on with it. Side down, we'll our service truck over there, and we can just work on both of them side by side. How's that sound? That'd probably be the smart thing to do and get them in one spot. Right. We can take off the front of the service truck or the back of the strawberry digger. Regen codes, that's what I was worried about. That's usually what you see in these tractors. Uh, we got a can, we got a can bus terminator or something giving us hell, and or our wire this is what it sounds like on that one. This is number two. This is the one I rebuilt the engine on. I think number two is the one. 
Okay. First thing I like to do is just turn the key on and see if something comes on as an active code. I'm just turn the key on. What tractor is that? That almost looks like a. Almost looks like a 8000. No, that's the other 6170R. So we're going to have all three of them out here. Babes, come on, babe. Stay over here, hon. Where's Duke at? Come on, load the data. Let's go, buddy. I don't see a caution insignia or anything flashing there, so... Well... didn't spin over very fast either but it was eight like I don't know seven o'clock this morning I know it was 19 degrees so it, it was a cold morning you start getting some good cold mornings you'll find out how good your batteries are and stuff go in here so there's nothing automatically beeping at me must not be that serious Let's see what controllers have what codes in them these tractors are very good for mechanics it takes a full-time mechanic to keep up with all the codes that are always blinking on them Okay. Lighting system, tail light circuit fault, okay. I don't know if they're gonna be too worried about that. But, uh, most of the time these guys will smash one of the tail lights and sort the tail light out or something. They'll probably turn it on when we turn that turn the lights on. Where do you turn the lights on on this thing at? Yeah, through code, lighting system, road lights, high beam circuit, fault, check bulbs. Okay. Communications system, communication fault, restart engine, and attempt vehicle recovery. Alright. HCC. Happened 123 times. Draft sensor fault. Drafts, draft control with restricted function. Restart engine to attempt vehicle recovery. So, I don't know if they want to fix that or not. Most of these guys don't even know how to use draft, to be honest with you. They don't even know what draft is. Let's see what kind of settings they've got it on. They probably got it turned up all the way to its, you know, to where it slips at its maximum setting. Most of the time you get in there and they got it set up too sensitive. There's their draft setting, and it's at, it's actually kind of, it's turned off, so. All right, well, never mind. VLC. I 
126 times so obviously whatever's going on here is happening quite a bit lighting system road road lights high beam circuit fault check bolts road lights low beam circuit fault check bolts okay so it obviously doesn't have any lights on the front end or something I'll have to ask them if they want me to see if I can figure out what's wrong with that. Okay guys, you get both these 6170 rs side to side. And I talked to the other guy over there and they said, whatever you think is the priority, you know, take care of it first. And if it's something that's not really that big of a deal. I said, well, to me the communication problem is probably going to be your biggest problem because, I mean, that can really affect the or prohibit the use of the tractor period if it's in the park clock system so man my computer screen got really dusty I can't see it so we're gonna look up these codes and see if we can figure out what's going on here let's go back into this and we'll go ahead and Fire the tractor up and let her run for a while. Both the puppies are in the cab of the pickup there. It was a little daisy. You can kind of see her head sticking out there. I had the pickup parked over there, and then both of them dogs were laying there in the sun. They were really enjoying themselves. I kind of felt bad about moving the pickup over here. Duke lost a toenail last night, so he's not doing too good. Somehow he ripped it about halfway off, and we just... I had my, daughter, well, I had my daughter grab a pair of pliers, and I... <laughs> I held him by the head. I said, go ahead and finish it off and get it out of there. So he's not he's not feeling too good. We poured a bunch of peroxide on his foot there and tried to get him cleaned up. And he wasn't really having that too much. codes here see if we can figure out what's going on I think the communication problem I want to look up that JDL code I don't have a clue what that is I got a feeling that's something to do with Green Star which these tractors have auto farm GPS on them so we don't really care about Green Star right now anyway Okay, we want to go to, this is a tier 4 engine, this is a 6RW motor. Alright, go to diagnosis test, go to, uh, yeah, worldwide edition, okay. Diagnostic trouble codes. All right, let's go into. Uh, let's go to this JDL. See what that's all about. This that JDL, I'm just not familiar with it. We've got one of them. JDL 001 has happened five times, and the JDL. Oh wait, JDO, yeah, that's the controller. Uh, 24709 has happened five times. Let's look at that one, it's happened more. Just doesn't give you a definition or anything. JDO control software, okay. So we got a 24709. Well, it's not even in. It's not even. I don't even have a 24709 in here. Eight forty-one oh seven. 
I've got an 84106. I've got an 84105. I do not even have an 84107. So it's it's something to do with cellular antenna and able to detect SIM card. So what's happened here is these guys have got in here and configured this tractor somehow and turned that on. They've been in here pushing buttons. That's exactly what's been going on. And they've probably configured something in here that shouldn't be configured that the tractor's not even set up for. Because they, they do that. They get in here and they you got to lock them out of half of this stuff or you'll have all kinds of codes popping up on you. And So I don't think we even be worried about that. It's got something to do with the cellular antenna or some shit. So maybe you guys... I'm sure these are probably set up like a car where you can talk through the damn radio or something on them. It's probably got something to do with that. Park lock codes are the ones I'm really concerned about. 116 times. Okay, feedback pressure sensor circuit fault system with restricted function. Restart engine to attempt vehicle recovery. Let's look at that park lock system. Feedback pressure sensor circuit fault. Okay, let's go to park lock controller. Go to a 524-195-03. The diagnostic code is generated if the PLC control software detects that the voltage at the signal input for the park lock sensor pressure is too high. This indicates that the circuit is sorted to a supply lead or is open. Check the diagnostic trouble code. Access record and delete the diagnostic double code for the software. See procedure dealing with the change of the code. Form an operator to check out. Pause the component. Check to see if the system is not will return. The first thing is we'll take it out of park. Put it back in park. The tilt this wheel down here. So. Whatever it's doing, it ain't doing it now. It's an intermittent problem. And I'm going back and forth to park and it's not throwing the code. Going forward in reverse and going back to park. It's not doing it, so this one might be kind of hard to find because it's not actively doing it right now. So let's just read the diagnostic step here. So it tells you here result. Okay, diagnosis trouble code does not return. Diagnosis completed. Not okay. Diagnosis trouble code reappears. Go to two. Well, it's not reappearing. We'll go to two anyway. See B90 uh, sensor park lock pressure circuit test. Let's go to that. When the ignition is on, disconnected connectors may cause additional... Yeah, no shit. Alright. Operational check. Perform operational check. PLC sensor for park lock pressure. Let's go into that. Okay. on engine off. Then we 
We have to go to park lot controller address number 12. Sure is hard to do. I might have to go drive this thing around and try to make it throw a fault. I don't know. Get it warmed up. I don't know what's going on there. So and find this park lock pressure sensor and I think it's gonna be over here in the right rear side, I think. Uh wait a second now. This is an IVT. I'm thinking of the old 7320s. Well the 7320s with the IVTs, they were on the right rear side. The park lock pressure sensor was. But I'm not sure on this one. I think the same spot really. Ah, uh, message center. We want to go to park lot control address. PLC 12. Let's we'll see if it does the, uh, if I got to be in. I don't know. I might have to be in. I might have to be in technician mode. To get into that address. I don't know yet. PLC address number 12 and they're going to make me go to technician mode so cycle the key go back in to that go into the addresses I think it's the same way as you know I don't know if I've ever been to technician mode on these uh, 6170 yards I think it's the same way I think you just hold it for four seconds let go and then hold it for another four seconds I might have to dig a little deeper into the service manual and figure out how to get into technician mode I'm sure somebody on there is going to go that ain't the way you do it you dumbass um Still learning a lot on these 6R series, to be honest with you. Let's go here. Nope, obviously you don't do it like that. So I don't know what we're going to do there. I've got to figure out how to get into that. Okay, so these are different. It says to go into the uh, information message center here. Select the addresses. Once the hourglass goes out, then hold it for five seconds, and you're supposed to be in technician mode. The old ones, 30 series, you held it, let off. Well, you held it for four seconds, let off, and you held it for another four seconds. So let's try it. Wait a second, but it didn't say anything about the hourglass. Alright, so we are. We're in technician mode. So when the hourglass is clear, just hold it for five seconds. Alright, let's go down to park lock. To, now I got to go back to the code and find out. That's what kind of gets you a little frustrated. You now you got to go back to the code to find out where in the hell you're at.
We're going to have to go back to that address. So, voltage range, no pressure exists with ignition. Okay. Drive lever in corner part position with engine running. Pressure in the control box of park lock. Point three. There should be no pressure because it's a spring loaded park brake. You're actually releasing the pressure to take the park lock off. So, let's go back in here. Go back to the addresses and do that total circle jerk again. Ah, oh, you dirty bastard. Damn it. Cycled the key. I didn't like that, so... Oh, I'm impatient. I am impatient. Oh, and all of a 
of a sudden it's out of spec. What the hell, huh? You see that? There's our problem. I think we got a bad pressure sensor is what it is. Okay. That's not okay, go to step two. Make sure the information plays under the customer. PLC. So park lock 034. So we gotta go to the park lock address PLC number 34 now. Let's go back to park. Let's go down to address number 34. Alright. That's our 5 volt reference line. It's good to go. So that's fine. You piece of shit. So the next code is ignition switch off. Okay, this is where I'm gonna have to go find the connector. Ignition switch off. Turn it completely off. Okay, what am I doing? Disconnects X413F connector of park lock sensor pressure sensor from component and check for dirty pushback or loose pins. Key on, engine off. Use a multimeter to check for voltage between X413F pin 443 and ground. Check if the voltage complies with the following speci specifications. So you're basically going from your ground circuit to your 5 volt reference signal. So let me go find this, guys. Hey guys, let me climb back under here. The park lap pressure sensor is in the same spot they've always been. Back here on the right rear side where the park lock assembly is, you're going to have your two solenoids and your. Let me get my hat so I can put this on my hat and then run my meter. The beeper's going off because I got the park lap pressure sensor unplugged. Basically, you're going to be checking your... Let's go back. Let's make out a bunch of wires here. So. Okay, pin C is the lone pin sticking out by itself on this three-wire sensor. So you're going to go pin... Pin A, or actually pin B to ground. So what we want to do here is take our little pigtail here. And see if we can ground it right here on this little... Ground it on that little stud right there. wires. I gotta do something here. Or I can get my hand in there. Okay, so I was on the wrong pin. I got 5.2 volts. Okay. That's pin B. It's A, B, C. Okay. So now, let's go between... Now what we want to do is go between pin A and pin B. Which sometimes that's a little bit difficult to do because the meter is a little easier to do. <clears throat> See if I can touch my. I don't really want to go get my meter out. If I got a ground, then I should have voltage there. Oh, you motherfucker. Just a son of a bitch. You can't get your hand in there because they got too many fucking wires in the way. Let's 
see, do I got a ground there? That doesn't make any sense if I got a ground there. Let me double check and make sure I'm reading the book right. Because something's not quite making sense here in the wiring. See how many wires and shit I can break trying to get my hand in there to test it. Create three more problems trying to fix one problem. There's no good way about any of this doing this. Let me see if I can go like this maybe. Make sure I'm touching the dirty bastard. I just can't. Might have to just, I'll just go get my meter. Be a lot better. And then I can stick the two terminals in I just can't stick that alligator clip in there and make it work, I don't think. Either that or get a piece of wire and stick in there and hook the alligator clip to it, it might be the thing to do. <laughs> I can't get both hands in there. It's too much shit in the way. GPS, auto steer shit, and you name it. if you could get that wire out there a little further towards you you know set a break down in there i think it's a pressure sensor itself it's going to be the fault <laughs> i've hit the button to swap this around fighting the son of a bitch, you know, trying to get things in there. Well, I have no voltage there. I'm going to check with my meter. Alright guys, so I went, I verified it, I got my multimeter out so I could get the pins, out, my terminals in there better. And I've got, you're checking between P and, you're going to have three wires on a pressure sensor, any pressure sensor. You know, one's going to be uh, reference, your 5 volt reference signal, the other one's going to be ground, and the other one's going to be signal return. So I verified that I have 5 volt reference signal, I have verified that I have ground, and that's all good to go there. So we know pin and A and B are good. Check the lead for shorts to ground. And what they're wanting you to do is check the signal return line. And disconnect the connector to the rear chassis control unit. Let's go ahead and check for dirty pushback or loose pins. Use a multimeter to check for shorts to ground. Um, okay, check the lead for continuity. Um, Alright, so let me see here. I want you to check that lead. Let's, there's an easier way to do this. It's Now, if I was out in the field, sensor for loophole circuit test. Um, we're going through that whole test. So check 5 volt supply, check lead 69. Let's go back one more step. Pressure circuit test. Circuit test completed and problem identified. All circuits are within specification. Replace sensor. And that's probably what it's going to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the park lot 12 control test again. And go to neutral. But we're going to take the park lot pressure sensor out of this tractor and put in this one. Make sure this key's off. But first thing is I just went over to this tractor. And the park lock pressure sensor has got about six inches of dirt on top of it. We gotta blow this one off. So pulling the pressure sensor and flopping them out, that's not something that's just gonna be an easy task. I'll show you why. Uh, so I'm supposed to find this X197AF2 plug and is on the chassis control module. 
I mean, yeah, wait till you see where they stuck the chassis control module on these IVTs. And then check between there and pin C and have zero to one ohm. This is the auto farm, what they call the SAM module, the steering assist module for auto farm. Back there is the chassis control module. Wonderful. Okay, now it's a 53 pin one, and they don't tell you which one it is. There's no pin out or identification as to which one of those three plugs it is. It's really nice of them. I mean, I'm so glad they they did that. That was really nice of them. But down here on this worthless pressure sensor I don't know if you can see that pressure sensor down there the hex see where it's belled out or like the bellows for the pressure sensor is below that's a hex you stick a wrench on and there's you're never gonna get an end wrench on that hex if you guys have ever seen an IPC sensor on a Ford they had a big hex the whole thing was a hex the way it was made so you could get a socket on them this thing here, I don't know how you'd ever get it out without damaging it. You'd have to take a pair of vice grips or something. I mean, the park lot cable's right in the way. Just a really, really piss poor design. I mean, I guess a guy could damage it and get it out of there and fight it out of there and put the new one in. But So now what you're supposed to do is find this other plug, which they don't really identify in the service manual, and uh, go to pin 14 on this X197AF2 plug to pin C and see if you can find that. I guess that's where I'm gonna go next. I'm gonna see if I can identify which one's which on this control module. So I'm gonna turn the camera off because uh, I'm gonna have to stick my head in here and try to get wedged in here to where I can get these unplugged without damaging them or take the whole module loose and swing it over here to where I can get to it. All right guys, so I found one connector the three connectors on that side of the controller, one of them's real small, so the two that are looking the same size, the first one I pulled off has got 53 pins, because there's 53, and there's number one. So we're gonna start, and there's pin 17, we're gonna go 17, 16, 15, 14. Let's stick this piece of wire in there, because it may not even be this, it may not even be this one. We'll pull both the ones that are 53 pin connectors and you know why don't they put a picture of the controller and say this is the plug maybe they're maybe they have to look in at all their stupid wire and schematics to find it but i don't know i'm just going to do it this way get on with the program here i gotta get on pin c here NC baby, where are ya? So I'm not getting any continuity there. Nothing. So maybe it's not that plug-in. Okay, so let me get to the next plug-in. Take my hat off, I gotta stick my head in there. I need that hat. That's what I'm going to hang the camera on when I start testing it. Oh, I can't get my left hand in there. And a little keeper. You got to depress the keeper. What in the hell was it at? Wiggle and shake and... Okay. All right, there it goes. All right, let's see this one here. Does it got 53 pins on it? What didn't they tell you one's gray and one's black or something, you know? This one numbered exactly the opposite of the other one. Can't read them numbers, they're so damn small. Five, no, it's numbered the same. 
So one, two, three, four, five. I'll start counting backwards on that other one. If we test this and the sensor's bad, which I have a feeling that's what it is, uh, you just can't get that. I just know I'll damage that sensor trying to get it out. And I gotta figure out how to put the new one in without damaging it. I mean, what do you do? Pull the cab and pull the transmission out so you can get to it, so you can get an in wrench on it? It's just ridiculous. Just seems like that some of these guys, when they engineer some of this stuff, you think that they would think this thing's through a little bit and look at that and go, well, they're never gonna get that out of there, but they just don't seem to do that. I don't, I don't know. No forethought on anything that they make, seems like. Oh, my piece of wire. So that's number five, that's going to be number 17. Uh, 17, 16, 15, 14. I'm thinking. But I can't get my wire in there now. I'm sure there's some special back probe kit or something you can buy. Somebody's got some fancy tool or. I don't have all the fancy tools. Okay, my meter's working, so... Okay, that's the wire. That's the one. And that wire is just fine. We've got .2 Point 0.1 ohms. The spec is zero to one. So the sensor's bad. Okay, let me order a pressure sensor for this one. Then I gotta go over there and start messing with the draft sensor on the other one. I'll be out here till dark trying to figure out sensors. Okay guys, so <laughs> yeah, there's your chassis control module back in there, isn't that nice? It's real handy, isn't it? He's getting, the problem is, guys, is they're getting to where they're putting so many modules on these tractors now, they're running out of room to put them. That's the truth. I mean, there's like 13 controllers, I think, on this thing. It's just absolutely crazy. And then these guys start adding their own modules to it. Steering assist modules and just, it's a whole plethora of electronics, I'm telling you. Let's see if we can get this plugged in. But, I guess that's what we get paid the big bucks for, huh? Now do you have to depress some of these you have to once you once you close them they they hit a lock and then you gotta depress them again. It's got a clicker there to it. Should go. Mechanics get a little pissy and a little grumpy, you know. They're dealing with shit like this all the time. Really, you know? Uh, all cramped up. You had your head shoved up there between the cab and a million wiring harnesses in the way. And just, yeah, it's a real lovely, joyful experience sometimes. But we could just guess and say, well, you know, I don't really feel like sticking my head in there. Let's, why don't you buy a brand new controller? I think that controller is bad. Or, you know, I don't know. It seems like that's what some of the guys do. Because mm -hmm. they don't want to do what I'm doing. They don't want to actually get in there and figure out what the problem is. Oh, come on, man. That's the thing. You know, you can't get to this controller. You don't know if you're getting that plug in there straight and you're going to bend one of them pins over. Or you just don't know. Well, guys, I'll probably make a video out of this one here on the 6170R Park Lot Control Pressure Sensor Test. Thanks for watching.